Hello everyone, my name is Ming. Today in this video, I'm going to talk about the gear that you need to shoot the Milky Way. Why do I want to talk about that? Because in Northern Hemisphere, the Milky Way season has started and especially in April and May, I think it's a good time to shoot the Milky Way. Because during this time, the Milky Way slowly comes up from the east. It's a good time to do panorama of the Milky Way that you could get the whole Milky Way band in the sky. I think that's pretty amazing. So just a couple of days ago, I drove into the mountain and attempted to capture the Milky Way. And here is the photo that I took. This photo was two panoramas combined together. Uh, one panorama for the Milky Way band and the, another panorama for the foreground and the mountains in the background. Just a little bit behind the scenes story about this photo. I left my home around 12.30 a.m. and then I drove about one hour and a half to maybe two hours to the mountains and I uh, found the location that I want to shoot and then I uh, shoot the Milky Way facing the east. And then I did a panorama to capture the whole Milky Way band. And that was about 3 a.m. when I shot the Milky Way band. Then I waited until 5.45, about half an hour, about 40 minutes before the sunrise. And then I captured another panorama of the foreground and the mountains. The reason I do that is because I would like to have my foreground and the background, you know, the uh, the bottom half panorama to be clean, to be sharp, to be a uh, good image quality because before sunrise, I could get away with a photo uh, with a very low ISO. And also another benefit is I could use a small aperture to capture the foreground and the mountains in the, in the background. So for my Fujifilm X-T2, I actually used a uh, F8 aperture. So for an APS-C size sensor, F8 is a pretty small aperture that, I, that allows me to get the foreground and the mountains in, in the background both in focus. So in the post, I combined two panoramas together, one panorama for the Milky Way and another panorama for the foreground and the uh, mountains in the background. I combined two panoramas together to create this photo. Today in this video, I'm going to show you everything that I brought with me into the mountains to capture this Milky Way photo. At any time, check out the description below because I will put the links in the description. So if you are interested, take a look at there. First, let me start with the essential stuff that you need to keep you stay warm when you go out and shoot Milky Way. A warm jacket, a hat, and warm gloves. Stay warm. I would say it is very important. Uh, once I went out to shoot Milky Way with my friends and my friends were just wearing t-shirts. Come on, t-shirts. And we were, we tried to shoot Milky Way during the night. It could be very cold. And while I was out shooting the Milky Way and they had to stay in the car because it's too cold for them to get out. So always be prepared for this. Bring a warm jacket with you. Even though you think you don't need it, you can always put it in your car. And whenever you need it, you can always grab it from your car. You want to finish your shoot because you get the photo you're happy with, not because you are too cold, right? So I think always get ready for the weather, get ready for the temperature. Always uh, uh, in advance, look online, look the weather forecast online to see what's the temperature going to look like. If, if, if it's windy, that kind of stuff can help you to stay warm during the night. Also bring water and some snacks because remember you are hours away from city, right? Uh, for shooting Milky Way, we always go to a remote area because we don't want the light pollution from the city. So we go to a remote area, maybe hours away from restaurants. So you want to bring water and snacks. You don't want to be thirsty or hungry during your shoot as well. A flashlight, isn't that obvious? And then the headlight. I think it's pretty useful, especially when I need to free my hands to change camera settings. Now let's talk about tripod. I brought a Benro carbon fiber tripod with me and I think it's a pretty good tripod. It's a sturdy tripod. Uh, it's a three section legs tripod. And the good thing about th that tripod is it has a bubble level on the tripod because I was shooting panorama of the Milky Way and also another panorama of the mountains. So I want to make sure my, uh, my tripod is level. So the bubble level can really help me. I, uh, basically, I just use the flashlight or the uh, headlight to light the bubble level. I just check uh, what I need to adjust and then I can get my camera perfectly level for the panorama. 
Now let's talk about the camera gear. I took this photo with Fuji X-T2, which is a APS-C sensor. And I before before Fuji X-T2, I owned a Nikon D750 camera body. I still have the camera. And before Fuji X-T2, every time I wanted to go out and shoot Milky Way, I always brought Nikon D750 with me because I always thought the full frame camera body is gonna produce cleaner image, especially at high ISO. Uh, before Nikon D750, I own the Nikon D3200, which is a Nikon APS-C sensor camera, and I never shot a Milky Way with that camera because I just, it's just like in my mind that full frame does a better job here at shooting Milky Way. But that changed after I started on uh, Fuji X-T2 because I think nowadays the technology is good enough uh, even for a APS-C sensor it, it would be okay shooting at high ISO to get the Milky Way. Also compared to camera body I think more importantly is the lens. Uh, for my Nikon D750 setup I have this 24-70 f2.8 and this Tamron 15-30 f2.8 uh, both large lenses both heavy lenses. After I switched to Fuji X-T2, the lens I shot this photo, let me show you. This is the lens I used to capture this panorama. As you can see, the size difference is huge. This is a Rokinon 12mm f2 lens. It's equivalent to about 18mm on a full frame sensor. And it's a manual focus only lens, which means it doesn't have the auto focusing feature. But anyway, I don't think it bothers me because you know, when you shoot Milky Way, it's totally dark outside, autofocusing doesn't work, uh, so manual focus is totally fine with me. Another benefit of shooting with the APS-C sensor camera system over full frame system is depth of field. For example, this Tamron 15-30 f2.8 lens, uh, to match this depth of field on the APS-C sensor camera, I can use a lens that is f2 because a f2 on APS-C sensor is equivalent to f3 on full frame. So actually this lens, uh, rocking on 12 millimeter f2 is actually going to produce a little bit more depth of field compared to this f2.8 lens. So for shooting Milky Way, if I shoot with full frame system, Tamron lens, then I uh, shoot at f2.8. And if I go with the Fuji X-T2 because it's APS-C uh, sensor and this lens is produced for the APS-C sensor, I can shoot at f2, f2.8, f2. So this is a faster aperture, which means I can use a lower ISO on my Fuji X-T2 compared to a full frame camera. Now let's assume if the full frame camera can produce about one stop cleaner image compared to APS-C sensor camera, but on the other hand, uh, APS-C sensor camera, I could use one stop lower ISO. So that kind of evens out. So today I think APS-C sensor is good enough to capture Milky Way. You don't have to have a full frame camera to start shooting Milky Way. All right guys, please let me know what's your favorite gear to shoot the Milky Way. Please let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you are not subscribed already, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It's the Milky Way season. Happy shooting out there. Stay warm, stay safe. I hope to see you next time.